we are going to discuss a very important theorem which is called Leibniz theorem and this theorem is used to find nth derivative of the product of two functions of a single variable x. So let u and v are the two functions of x then nth derivative of the product of uv which is denoted by uvn is given by uvn is equal to uvn plus nc1 u1 vnc uh, vn minus 1 nc2 u2 vn minus 2 plus so on to v un though we may also write it as nc0 in the first term but we have written only uvn because nc0 is 1 and in the last step last term we may write ncn and we have written vun because ncn is also equal to 1 so this is Leibniz theorem now we are going to prove it so let this expression is considered to be Pn. We assume this expression as an statement Pn because we are going to prove this theorem by mathematical induction principle. So for that purpose we have to assume the expression as Pn statement. So that is U V n is equal to u v n plus n c 1 u 1 n minus v n minus 1 plus n c 2 u 2 v n minus 2 and plus so on to v u n or u n v. So let us check whether this statement is correct for 1 or not. So substituting n is equal to 1 in this expression we have u v 1 that is the first product uh, first differential of the product u v. So we have on the right hand side u v 1 plus v u 1. So simply this is first function as it is differential of the second one and the sec plus second function as it is differential of first one which is true by product rule. So p 1 is true. Now let p r is true thus p r is u v r is equal to u v r plus r c 1 u 1 v r minus 1 plus r c 2 u 2 v r minus 2 plus so on to the last term is u r v let it be equation number 1 now we have to show that p r plus 1 is also true so the statement p r plus 1 will be u v r plus 1 as in this expression if we replace r by r plus 1 we have u v r plus 1 so we have u v r plus 1 on the right hand side we have u v r plus 1 r plus 1 c 1 u 1 v r u r plus 1 c 2 u 2 v r minus 1 and so on to the last term will become u r plus 1 v u r plus 1 v so we have to prove it now in order to prove p r plus 1 is true we have to differentiate equation number 1 so differentiating equation number 1 we have on the left hand side u v r plus 1 because the next differential of u v r will be u v r plus 1 and on the right hand side we have the first term u v r which is differentiated by product law product rule so first function as it is differential of v r that will be v r plus 1 plus differential of the first function that is u 1 and the second function v r as it is similarly in the next next term we have r c 1 which is constant coefficient so rc1 is written as it is and product rule is applied on u1 vr minus 1 so first function u1 as it is and the next differential of vr minus 1 is vr plus rc1 constant coefficient the next differential of u1 u2 and second function r minus 1 as it is similarly in the third uh, term rc2 constant coefficient as it is the first function u2 as it is and the next differential of u vr minus 2 will be vr minus 1 plus rc2 constant coefficient as it is the next differential of u2 will be u3 
and the second function as it is that is vr minus 2 and if we go on doing the same up to the last term we have ur as it is the differential of v that is v1 and plus the next differential of first function ur that is ur plus 1 and the second function as it is. In the next step we write first term as it is. In the second term we may write it as rc naught u1 vr because as we know rc naught is equal to 1 so we write rc naught u1 vr instead of r u1 vr. Next term as it is rc1 u1 vr next to this rc1 u2 vr minus 1 next to this rc2 u2 vr minus 1 rc2 u2 vr minus 1 and so on to the last term which is ur plus 1 v ur plus 1 v is the same. Now in the next step the first term is written as it is u vr plus 1 plus and in the next two terms we take u1 vr common. So in the bracket we have rc0 plus rc1. In the next two terms we may take common u2 vr minus 1. So u2 vr minus 1 and inside the bracket we have rc1 plus rc2 and so on to the last term ur plus 1 v as it is. Since by the properties of the combination ncr minus 1 plus ncr is equal to n plus 1 cr by this property we may infer r c naught plus r c 1 is equal to r plus 1 c 1 and r c 1 plus r c 2 is equal to r plus 1 c 2. Thus from equation number 2 we have u v r plus 1 r c naught plus r c 1 which is equal to r c r plus 1 c 1 and in the next term we have r c 1 plus r c 2 which is equal to r plus 1 c 2. So in place of r c naught plus r c 1 in this step we write r plus 1 c 1 and instead of r c 1 plus r c 2 we have we have to write r plus 1 c 2. So in the next step we have u v r plus 1 on the left hand side on the right hand side u v r plus 1 plus r plus 1 c 1 u 1 v r plus r plus 1 c 2 u 2 v r minus 1 plus so on to u r plus 1 v. So we have the same statement the same statement as we have established here in the previous page p r plus 1 was u r plus 1 as you see the same terms we have u r u v r plus 1 and the next term r plus 1 r plus 1 c 1 u 1 v r in the next r plus 1 c 2 u 2 v r minus 1 and the last term is u r plus 1 v and we have here u r plus 1 v. So p r plus 1 is true whenever p r is true. So hence by mathematical induction principle p n is true for all n belongs to n hence Leibniz theorem is proved.